Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today I'm very 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 excited because we're going to be jumping into Substance Painter. If you've been following this series, we've been modeling and uh, UVing this chest right here and it's finally time to go into Substance Painter and give it at least a couple of textures. We're going to be dividing the Substance Painter part into two elements. Today we're going to be talking about bakes. So this is what we have right now. Um, as you can see, this is my render setup right here and there are a couple of things that are very very important that we should try to look for. First of all, uh, we're not going to be exporting any of those things. We just need the chest. And ideally, you want this thing to be symmetrical and as close as possible to the to the center of the grid as you can. Once we have this, we, of course, need to have UVs. If you haven't checked our previous UV video, I'll show you how to do uh, this thing right here. Now, it seems like I have something extra. Where is this? Oh, it's a plane. <laughs> It's a really small plane right there that we're not going to be taking. So there's a couple of things that we need to do before we bring this into Substance Painter. As you might remember from the previous video, we actually gave this a subdivision level, meaning that this thing is smoothed out. And you can see on our poly count that we have 200,000 polygons. Some of you might be like, that's way too much for a game asset. Yes, I know. But later on, on the Unreal section, I'm going to show you why this is not a problem anymore. Okay, so I'm going to stay with this uh, poly count for now. And the first thing I'm just going to do is I'm going to say file export selection and i'm going to export this selection um to our element now actually before we do that since i do want to be able to open this chest we're going to be going over rigging later on as well since i do want to be able to open this chest one of the things that we need to do wait a second there's a little sphere right there is that like a i don't know why that thing is right there do we have another one right here oh, it says that we have a couple of like hidden spheres right here Give me just one second. Let me make sure to bring this little hidden guys forward. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to see them. So since we are going to be animating this thing eventually, I don't want the upper parts of the chest to be influencing the lower parts of the chest. So I'm going to grab everything here. I'm just going to say mesh and we're going to separate into a bunch of different uh, elements. Let me see. At least a couple of this are like combined this ones. So we're going to separate. There we go. So now if we go to the front view. One of the things that we can do is we can grab all of the upper sections right here actually there's another thing right there so mesh and separate and we're going to grab all of those guys here on the top and we're just going to bring them up the reason why i want to bring them up is because i don't want the ambient occlusion from the top part to be baked down onto the lower section of the elements this is sometimes also called as explosive bake or exploded bake where you separate all of the different parts of your characters into multiple elements they bake by themselves and then you bring them back together we do this quite a bit with character for instance imagine you have a character and he has like a big necklace on the on the chest if you bake the necklace and the character at the same time and you don't do any other method you're going to be baking the detail from the necklace into the chest so if the necklace moves you're going to see some weird shadows and effects on the chest of the character which is not what we want but if we move the the necklace to another section like a couple of feet away from the character then each element is going to be baked like normally and you're not going to have the issue so in this case right here i'm just going to bring the lead up probably something like that so we can actually see inside of the chest in case we want to add like something else and then now that we have all of that i'm just going to grab the whole object right here make sure very important we need to make sure that they all have the exact same material and just to make sure we have that i'm actually going to create a new lambert material i'm going to call this m underscore chest this is very important this is the naming convention that i normally use for my elements now if all of this sounds very crazy for now remember that we have premium courses available i have one about creating a weapon inside the blender very similar process to what we're doing right here and um you can learn the whole pipeline right there so i'm just gonna go here file export selection and we're gonna go of course to our assets to our chest and i'm gonna export chest uv ready that's fine now since this is gonna be our low poly i'm just gonna export it as chest and that's it and once we have that, we can actually go to Substance 3D Painter, which is the software that we're going to be using. I got a question very recently in our Udemy course about alternatives to Substance Painter. And to be honest, I would say there's only like two or three like big alternatives. You get 3D Code, which is really good. You get Marmoset, and then you get something like Quixel. So those would be like the competitors. But for from my experience, I've been using Substance Painter pretty much since it came out, like all the way in like 2014, 2015. And um, it's just the best. Like the, the, there's like the other ones are nowhere near close in my opinion. If you wanna do more advanced texture in a slightly different method, then Mari is a great competitor, but we're not using Mari right now. So we're gonna do 4K because we're gonna go like completely crazy here with the textures. And we're gonna go to our chest and grab our chest FBX and hit open. And I'm gonna hit okay. If everything worked properly, we should have only the objects that we exported right here. 
everything should be looking nice like we shouldn't have any any like inverted normals or anything and we should only have one material here on our texture set list if you're at this point and everything looks nice then congratulations we're ready to jump onto the next stage so in order for us to use a lot of the tools that we have here inside of a marmon set I'm probably going to do a Marmoset course soon. So in order for us to use the tools that we have here inside of Substance Painter, we need to do something called a bake. And that's what we're going to be talking about right now. So usually we understand the bake as the process that we use to transfer the information from a high poly to a low poly. However, in this particular case, we actually do not have a high poly. We can create one. If we want to have a little bit more like smoother edges and some elements here on the chest, we could just subdivide the original mesh and then export that as a high poly. However, I don't think we really need to do it because this one has like a good enough like resolution that that's not going to be necessary. But even though we don't have a high poly, we still can get information, get maps right here, this mesh maps that we have right here to better utilize the tools that we have inside of Substance. So I'm going to go very quickly through all of them. And the first thing you need to do here is you need to set your output size at least to the same size that you're intending to output the textures. You could bake lower uh, in a lower resolution and then export at a high resolution, but it's not the same to bake at a high resolution from the beginning than to upsample things. When you upsample, you might get some like weird effects. So in this case, 4K is perfectly fine. We don't have a cage again. We're not doing anything. We're just keeping it simple for this thing. And uh, what we do want to do is here on the anti-aliasing, we do want to apply at least a 4x anti-aliasing, which is going to give us a slightly smoother effect. Now, the maps that we're going to be baking are as follows. Normal map, world space normal, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness. We do not have again important information but we can still like extract things so the normal map information is the curvature of the object it's going to be very simple in this one the world space normal tells us to which part of the element the object is pointing to so all of the faces are pointing up all of the faces that are pointing like sideways or forward and backwards we're going to get that information from the world space normal why is this important well imagine we want to add a layer of dust on top of everything we need that information we need to know which layers or faces are pointing up so that we can leave the dust right there the ID map, we might be using it later on. Let me know in the in the, in the comment section if you want me to do an ID pass. Um, but we're going to be using that one, uh, or we would need to use that from, from Maya. I don't think, again, we're going to really need it because everything is a single object. We're not baking down into low poly elements. However, this one could be important. The ambient occlusion is probably the most important one of all of them, which is a shadow effect that tells us what parts of the object light has a little bit of a trouble getting into. So when you have two objects very close together, not only are they going to be casting shadows from the light, they're also going to be generating something called occlusion, where, again, it gets a little bit darker because light has a little bit more of an issue getting in that those areas. And it's amazing. The ambient location map's amazing for, like, rust and grime and dirt and things like that. The curvature tells us which parts are like the edges. So if you are a fan of the metal edge wear here instead of substance, you need a curvature map. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Position tells us on what position based on the world this thing is. This usually works with smart masks, such as like a, like a ground dirt or something. So it knows which parts are closer to the ground, which parts are closer to the, like the ceiling or whatever. Uh, it usually works a little bit better for big elements. Uh, for a small one, you're not going to see that much of a difference, but still a good, uh, a good tool to have. And finally, thickness, as the name implies, will tell us how thick each object is. Again, not really super useful for this thing, but we might be able to do a little bit of a trick later on on the texturing side of things to get this to work. So I'm just going to hit Bake Selected. And as you can see, uh, the magic of uh, GPU computing is going to do all of the bakes very quickly. That was the normal map. That was the world space normal. That's the ID, which is empty. That's the ambient occlusion. Beautiful ambient occlusion. That's the curvature. And that is the position and finally the thickness. So yeah, once this is done, we can jump back to our paint element. And it's not going to look that much different. The one thing that you might notice is the ambient occlusion, which again is this pass that you can use to add like an extra shadow. So here's the first tip. Let's say you want to add a little bit more ambient occlusion. Well, we can add a fill layer right here with this little bucket. I'm just going to press Control and click on the color. Or sorry, uh, Alt and click. Alt and click. Alt and click on the color option so that everything else turns off. So we only have color information. I'm going to bring this all the way down to black and I'm going to call this AO because it's going to be just like a general AO pass that we can intensify a little bit more. Right click, add a black mask. And on this black mask, I'm going to add a fill layer. And on this fill layer, I'm going to go to this grayscale option and I'm going to look for ambient occlusion. 
You're going to see here we have the mesh map that we just baked out of the element and we can use that to generate this ambient occlusion pass. Now you can see that this ambient occlusion pass is actually inverted. So we need to right click and add a levels information here to invert this so that we get the blacks and the whites properly like positioned here. And we can push this thing, as you can see, to make the ambient occlusion way, way more intense or way, way more subtle. So this is just a very like quick and easy way to add a little bit of detail to the whole thing. Uh, again, I, I want to really take my time on showing you some like basic texturing things that we can do, but I don't want to stop the video here with like a super boring, just like ambient occlusion bake. So I'm going to show you how to organize this into, into three main groups, okay? So I'm going to go here to my library. I'm going to look for wood. And as you can see, we have a lot of different options. For this chest in particular, I think I'm going to use this H walnut wood. I'm not sure if you guys have access to this one. I do have access because I, I pay for my software, of course, and I have access to Substance 3D assets. So when you pay for this thing, you get access to like free materials here uh, every month. But if you don't have access to that one, you're using like a student version or something, you can also use Substance Community Assets. If you look for substance community assets right here, there are a bunch of free materials that you can use. You can literally just look for wood, for instance, and some of them are really good. Some of them are eh, so and so, but you might find something that works for your project and they're completely free. So it's a big, uh, a big uh, pro or a plus side right there. Like this painterly wheel looks really, really nice. So if you want to use it, you just download it, load it into substance and use it for your project. Again, in my case, I'm going to use this H walnut. I'm just going to drag and drop it right here. And you're going to see that we get this. Not looking great, right? So how can we fix this? How can we make this thing a little bit better? Well, the first thing I need to do is I need to increase the tiling. So I'm going to go here to the properties of the material and increase the tiling until I get a nice like wood grain. I might also get rid of the, um, of the height. I think the height is way, way, way too much. So I'm going to get rid of it. Or another option that I have is going all the way down here to the technical parameters and the height uh, range, I can lower that down. So by doing that, we're softening the amount of height that we have. Another thing that's very important, this is one of the things that I always check on your portfolios, and um, we're going to be having more portfolio reviews on October, but I always check this, and it's very important that we rotate the the wood grain so that it follows the long sections now thankfully on our ub maps everything was like properly laid out vertically so the only thing i need to do here is rotate this in 90 degrees and as you can see that's going to give me the nice wood grain on all of the wood elements now some of you might be very um of uh, what's the word very Hmm, I forgot what the word is, but some of you guys might know this, that we have wood everywhere and we don't want wood everywhere. We just want the wood to be on the wooden parts. So here's where groups are really good and masks are really good. I'm going to control G to create a new group and this new group is going to be called wood. I'm going to say add black mask and everything that's inside of this group is now hidden because of this black mask. If I then right click on this black mask and I add a paint node, I can paint which parts of this object I want to be visible. Therefore, which parts of this object I want them to be uh, made out of wood. And in order to accelerate this process, one thing that we can use is we can use uh, this tool over here which is called the uh, color picker, picker or polygon fill tool. The shortcut is the number four on your keyboard. And I can go to this option, which is object mode. And I can literally just click all of the objects that I want to be made out of wood. And as you can see, it just fills them. So this is one of the reasons why I decided not to do a low poly, because if we had a low poly, then painting all of this thing might have been a little bit more complicated. So I'm just going to select all of the wood planks right here very carefully. You can even do a drag selection. I'm not doing it on the side elements because I might be touching things that I don't want to touch in this particular case. But all of these guys are going to be filled with this very nice wood material. So now, as you can see, we've successfully like completed the first part of our uh, process, which is generating this very cool uh, wood effect or wood grain on the whole elements. Now, can you see that little line right there? That little line is coming from some sort of like bake or something. I'm not sure what that is. It could be a UV as well. So here's a trick that we can use with the uh, walnut wood to get rid of that. I'm going to change the projection here from UV projection to triplanar projection. We might need to bring this tiling, or sorry, the tiling now. We might need to bring the rotation back to zero so that wood grain is again like normal. And there we go. And as you can see, as you can see, that pretty much fixes that line. It's, it's barely visible right there. It's definitely the UV. Uh, but hopefully with a little bit of uh, tricks um, on the next uh, video, we're going to be able to hide that.
So that's my first layer. The second layer, I'm going to go for some metals. And we actually have two layers of metals, right? So we have this sort of like uh, iron metal, and then we have this like golden details on like the little dots. So if I grab, let's say, this metal grinded, it looks very cool. I'm just going to drop it right here. I'm going to control G again, go into a black mask. And again, using my polygon fill, I can grab pretty much every single piece of metal. In this case, it might be easier to just grab everything and then press X to flip the texture information so that we go to white, to paint white. And that way, we can just paint out all of the wood boards. And as you can see, that's going to make it a little bit faster than having to select all of the individual objects that make up all of the little like spheres and things. Because the, the planks are a little bit bigger, right? So again, this should be fairly, fairly fast. Just do a lot of selections. I remember one of my teachers back in the day when I was a student, he, he used to tell us that uh, 3D, 3D work is like 70 or 80% selection. And then the other one is like actually doing something. So this folder is going to be my metals folder. And then inside of this metal folder, so I'm going to add this stylized uh, like raw metal, which is like a golden effect. I'm going to add a black mask to that one. And now I can even turn on symmetry over here to move a little bit faster. And we're going to select all of the little like elements right here. I might select a couple of other elements. So for instance, if you guys remember, the lock and a couple of these things were made in like layers. So it kind of makes sense to have uh, a couple of like slightly different colors on those elements just to just to break up the elements. I know we're not following the concept anymore, or at least not like fully, but I feel like just adding these little details is a good way to, to just add variation to the whole thing. I am going to leave some bolts or some of this like little spheres as... Um, as normal colors, but some others, I think it's worth it to have them in this sort of like gold effect. There we go. Oh, careful there. There we go. We press number one again to go back to our element and look at that. Things looking very, very cool. And the cool thing about working with masks, which is what we're doing right now, is that at any point I can go back and be like, hey, you know what? Maybe I don't want the main lock to be like golden. I want the, like everything to be on a slightly different color. And that's going to give us a very, very nice effect. Now, for the little like touch, the little secret. And with this, we're going to finish this video. Rust. Everyone loves rust. Everyone loves adding dirt to your elements so they look a little bit better. So I'm going to grab this metal rust right here, get it inside of the metals. Actually, I'm going to get it on the top so that it affects everything. You can see we get this very like beautiful rust effect. I'm going to definitely increase the intensity a little bit of the tiling to something like, I don't know, eight. And then I'm going to say add a black mask, right click. And one of the magic things about Substance Painter are, of course, it's generators. So I'm going to select this generator right here and I'm just going to select dirt. And what's going to happen is, thanks to the maps that we like did earlier, remember all of this, the curvature, the ambient occlusion, the world space, normal, the position, this thing is being projected on top of the element, and it's generating this very, very, very cool effect. Now, how can we make this even better? I'm going to change this to multiply so that it darkens the whole thing. If we need to, we can bring this. If we want this to be a little bit redder, we can just increase the, the color intensity a little bit right there. But it's going to blend the colors a lot better. And one thing I am going to do is I'm just going to remove the height. I don't want... well. I kind of like the height, but it's a little bit too much. So again, I'm going to go to technical parameters and just bring the height range down so that we add a little bit of that like grungy effect, but not too much, right? And everything here inside of Substance, or at least most of the things, are procedural. So at any point, I can increase the amount of dirt or decrease the amount of dirt depending on how intense I want my chest to be. So in this case, I'm going to do something like this. And because you stayed until the very end, I'm going to show you one little trick right here that you can do that's going to really make this whole thing pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to do here is one of the like the mistakes that everyone makes when they're doing uh, this sort of like 3D work is that they just leave the dirt as is. And it's not very common that you're going to have dirt like perfectly uniform across an object. So what you can do here is right click on the mask, add another fill layer. And in this fill layer, add something like a cloud's noise. So if we just look for like a cloud, what this is going to do is going to project a cloud. And we can use this cloud, as you can see right here, like that's the, the current texture of the cloud. We can use this cloud to multiply against the, the metal edge where that we have or the dirt that we have to generate something a little bit better. So if we multiply this against the mask, look at that. So instead of having dirt everywhere, this cloud is kind of like hiding, procedurally hiding that dirt from certain places. It's giving us a more and more natural look for the whole chest. 
And that's it. That's all you need to do for this first stage for the creation of the textures of your element. We're going to be going over a couple of extra tricks on the next video. It might be um, uh, until next week. But if you like the series, make sure to leave a like, share and subscribe because we are trying to grow and your support is what's going to allow us to get there. So if you've liked all of the tips that we've shared so far, show us a little bit of support down here in the comments. And well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Make sure to keep going. Make sure to check our premium courses if you want to learn even more. And uh, I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.